thank you for tuning in to the Doing Business with God podcast. Hey, you. Yes, you. I am your host, Michi Renee. It is Michi's passion to help you live your best life and do business God's way. Michi will be talking about entrepreneurship, manifestation, monetization, mindset, beliefs, starting and growing a business, nonprofit, or ministry, all while serving God. So welcome to My Daddy's Business. It's time for the show. It's the Doing Business with God podcast with your host, Michi Renee. Hello, tribe. Welcome back to another episode of the Doing Business with God podcast dedicated to helping you do business God's way. In this episode, I will be talking to my special guest, Miss Lisa Balthazar. Lisa, welcome to the Doing Business with God podcast. Hi, thank you. So happy to be here. Awesome. So let's just get right into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your entrepreneurial journey. Oh, quite a journey it has been. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I got started way back in 2008, 2009 when I was actually kicked out of the job market. Thank you, corporate America. But wow. you know what? I looked at that as an opportunity. I took it as an opportunity and I ran with it. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So I started out uh, way back then and I flailed around for a couple years like a fish out of water because nobody teaches you this stuff in school. So I had to learn a lot. So now my mission is to really help other people fast track past all of the stuff that took me years and years to learn. Right. So what do you do in your business and how do you help people? So I am a digital marketing strategist, social selling coach, and mindset coach. So I help people really up-level their businesses, uh, bring consistent flow of clients into their business and be able to scale into the next level. Because until we do that as, as entrepreneurs, it's really tough to get past a certain income threshold. Oh, absolutely. I can totally agree with you there. So what would you say to our audience that are listening that are, we're going to talk about the people who may be just starting out. What would be your best tips and advice for someone who is just coming into the start of their business and really just getting started on their entrepreneurial journey? Okay, so my, oh, there's so many things I could say here. <laughs> um, my biggest tip is to not give up, to persevere through it all. There's, it's going to be a roller coaster ride, no matter um, if you start out successfully, it doesn't end, end up always staying that way. It, it can be huge ups, huge downs. It's really hard. So one of the main things I think that is really, really, really important for new entrepreneurs is to understand that right out of the gate, to persevere through that. Um, pray a lot. <laughs> pray a lot and um, get to the other side of it. Uh, if you persevere through it, you will number one, learn so much. And number two, you will understand just how strong you really are. Because I never understood that about myself, how strong I really am. And being an entrepreneur made me realize exactly how strong I am. And it's, it's amazing to really understand that about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. That is definitely one thing that I say all the time is no one tells you the emotional journey that you're on when you are a business owner. Um, you guys, you will have moments where you're pissed off, you're angry, you're sad, you're crying. It's normal. Do not think that there's anything wrong with you. You're going through a process. You're growing a business. You're birthing whatever it is that you're pregnant with and success doesn't come overnight. Don't let anyone sell you that pipe dream. It doesn't work that way. You have to trust the process. Mm -hmm. So what have you learned in your journey and what have you done um, within yourself and your business? The number one, well, there are two really super important lessons that I learned that have helped me propel my business to the next level just this past year. And I've known about both of them for a long time, 
but I was not able to actually act on them. And the first one is your mindset needs to be right and you need to work on it every single day. It's not something, it's a once and done. It's an everyday thing. It's a process. Um, you go through so much as an entrepreneur. It is vitally important for you to be able to move to the next level, to be able to understand what that means for you emotionally, mentally, and all of that. And the second thing that I learned that is vitally important and has helped me uh, extremely much is hiring a coach. Um, there, if if I had to say the, you know, if when people ask that question of me, normally I say hiring a coach because that is the thing that gave me the um, the leverage that I needed just by having someone else's knowledge in there with me, and. Um, it was super, super important uh, for me to be able to propel my business to get everything in order. Like I knew what I was doing. And as many of you, you know what you're doing. But the problem is putting it into a process or system that actually works. And that was my main downfall in the years that I spent struggling. So that's one of the things that I am here to help people with also now, because this is the one thing that has kept me from getting to where I needed to go. Absolutely. So ladies and gentlemen, you are hearing this from someone other than the business coach telling you to get a coach. I want you guys to hear that. I don't say that to you because I want you to come work with me. Of course I do. But you need the support. It's the structure. It's the system. It's the processes. It's the accountability. It's the expertise. It's the structure, the community, all of that that you get by joining a coaching program. And I'm going to tell you, even if you're a newbie, get the coach. It's the best investment you're going to make in yourself and in your business. Get a coach. Don't worry about a website. Don't worry about landing pages and all that stuff. Get a coach. It'll help 10x your results. It's a quickly. fast track for sure. Very, very quickly. Very quickly. So what is a digital marketing specialist and a social seller coach? Okay. So, that. yeah. So digital marketing really encompasses like all things digital and, um, Many people that have been following me for years know that I started out as a content marketer. So I'm a very strong content marketer. I have very strong content and SEO background. So it encompasses that piece. It encompasses the email or marketing. It encompasses just really everything that you're doing online, putting it all together into a strategy that is actually going to work for your business. So, um, and the, with the social selling, that is a newly acquired, um, skill that I am using in my business right now. Um, it's very, very effective. And that really just means talking to people, having conversations with people online, uh, getting in th them into my circle so I can influence them, talk to them and be able to sell to them ultimately. Absolutely. So how can people get in contact with you? Cause I always forget to ask that. So how can people <laughs> connect and contact, um, connect with you and contact you outside oh. of the podcast? Okay. So one of the, the main things that I have, my hub, where I hang out, where my people are, and where I do all my trainings is my Facebook group, Social Media Business Solutions. I've had that group for a long time. It is a small, intimate group. I actually like it that way. Um, I you know, I don't know if I really want it to grow super big because the intimacy in the group actually helps generate conversations. Um, a lot of the larger groups, they kind of lose that. And, um, but I do a lot of super, super trainings in there uh, each and every week, give a lot of tips. And that is the best place to reach me. Awesome. So being that this is the Doing Business with God podcast, how do you do business with God? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I, I, I spend a lot of time and over the years, I can tell you one of the main things that has been front and center in my life um, is actually praying every day. I ask God for direction in my business all the time. And, you know, I really am trusting and having faith 
that I am where I am supposed to be and I'm headed where I'm supposed to go. Um, as entrepreneurs, we don't always have the right answers and we don't always know what those answers are, but there is someone up there who does and we need to just trust in that and um, take what is presented to us. I believe that, you know, the things that are placed in front of us in our lives are meant for us and uh, they're there for a reason. So we need to recognize it and understand it and, and, and accept that for us. And just recently, this is funny because just recently, um, I was actually on a coaching session with one of my coaches um, and something came up and she said to me, Lisa, you went through all of these hard things so you could be where you are now. So that is my one little lesson that I want to bring to everybody. Those hard times, you're going through them for a reason because it's to make you stronger and to help other people. Yeah. So that's yeah. your testimony. That is absolutely yeah. your testimony. And sometimes we, we can't run from that. I know that I have done that in the past when I have known that I needed to share my story with someone, but at the time was shameful about it or prideful about it or whatever the case. And that person missed an opportunity to grow and to learn something and to keep them from making the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I know my grandmother used to tell us all the time growing up that bought sense is better than told sense. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to buy any more sense. So if, if someone can tell me something, if I can learn from someone else, I don't want to buy any more sense. Period. Right. <laughs> I don't want to buy any more sense. Absolutely. That's the hard road. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, what would you say has been the biggest thing that you have learned that you've taken from a lemon and made lemonade? Okay. So as an entrepreneur, um, I've launched many programs. I've had many successes, many failures. Those failures, they're hard. There's hard. And one thing I will say, um, you know, I, I spend days in tears when things haven't worked. And because when you're an entrepreneur, you work hard. You work really hard. You put your whole self into what you're doing because you believe in it. It's a mission. And that's how I feel about my business. It's really, it's really a mission and I have a bigger vision for it. And when those things don't work out, it is personal, even though it's not, yeah. it feels like it is. Yeah. So my biggest thing that I would say to somebody is feel the feelings because you're going to, um, and move on quickly from it. But Look at the situation and learn from it. Um, it. Pick yourself up as fast as you can. I mean, I just came off of, um, you know, I had a couple launches just recently that failed, and I jumped right into the next one. And the faster you just keep moving, the less it will affect your psyche um, and drag you down. Because you just need to look at it, accept it, realize what went wrong and move on to the next thing. Stay in forward motion, um, and that keeps you in a more positive place. Yeah, absolutely. It, failure is just nothing more than an, another opportunity to do something again, to pivot. Um, I don't hold attachment to things um, most of the time because a lot of times we can't control other people, and... You know, it's not our job to convince people that they need what we have. It's our job to put it out there and for them to recognize that they need it. Um, and sometimes we can't, we can't control that. And if the people are not ready to step into making an investment in their self, I just have to separate it. That it's, it's not me. It's that they're not ready maybe we need to have some more conversations. Maybe we need to nurture a little bit more, but it's just not the right time. And, you know, that's okay. So do you work with people one-on-one? -on -one? Do you have group programs? How are you currently working with your clients? 
Um, actually, I have both. Uh, right now, I am promoting a group program that's going to run for 12 months. And I'm all, I also do accept one-on-one -on -one clients. I do only have an opening for three clients at one time, though, because I want to be there 100% with my clients. I'm really all in their business with them, and they have full access to me. So it's a lot. Um, but I want to be able to give 100% support to the people that I work with because it's something that I know that I needed when I was going through a lot of the things and I really didn't have. So I want to be able to really support them in the best way that I can, um, the most comprehensive way that I can. So I really limit my one-on-ones. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. That's great. So when um, you have any micro offers like outside of your lunch or if they're, you know, not really wanting to work one-on-one, -on -one, any like small offers is what I call them, like micro offers. Yeah, I do. I have a VIP session. Um, it's, it's really, it's a three hour session. Normally I do end up breaking it up into one hour sessions. So three, one hour sessions. Cause what ends up happening is three hours with me is a lot when you're asking for help with something. And what happens is after about an hour, people's eyes start glazing over and they need to process what we've already gone over. So usually, even though it's a three hour session and you can do it in three hours, um, I usually break it up into three because it's a lot easier for uh, my clients to actually process everything and get everything in place. Um, I also have a 31 day program called, called fast track to clients. I, and I just, um, I just finished that one up and I'm, and this month I do have it up right now to go through January. Um, I don't run that one too often. It is really, it is a fast track. It is so much information in 31 days that it's almost like going into a graduate program <laughs> for 31 days. <laughs> I totally get it. I totally get it. So Unicorn Tribe, we are all about fun. That's one of our core values. So what do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? I hang out with my dog. <laughs> I do. Awesome. I, love my, I love my dog. And I try to get out and go for a walk. Um, during these times, um, <laughs> I, I mostly go for a walk. I do like going um, hiking and stuff like that, but I don't really, I live in a city and it's not extremely safe to go by myself so if I don't have anybody to go with I just generally don't get to do that um but I do like going hiking and stuff like that I love the outdoors I think you know it's God's world and I think it's here and it's beautiful and it's amazing and we should all really enjoy it absolutely what kind of dog do you have I have a Pomeranian oh wow well, yeah the hairy one yes <laughs> my my best friend she has the Pomeranian and sometimes when I go, when I've gone to her house, I'm like, man, you can't even see his eyes for all the hair. <laughs> They're That's so how cute. Mine is. <laughs> they look like teddy bears. Yep. <laughs> they look like teddy bears. Um, how, how old is he or she? He is um, eight. Oh, wow. Well. No, nine, nine, nine. Yeah, he's, he's had a stroke. So he's, he's had his moments in life for being such a young dog. My last one my last Pomeranian lived till 19. So oh, wow. that's why I say he's young, even though he's like nine. So. <laughs> yeah, that is amazing. So what does the future hold for your business? What, what do you have coming up for the rest of this year and going into years to come? My future holds a lot of good things. I am actually so excited about this year. I was excited about last year because I knew last year was going to be a year of growth. And it was. It was. I did not meet my income goals for last year, but that's okay. Because Neither I had, I. I had okay. such growth. I had such growth last year that now I get to take all that growth and put everything into motion this year. And that is really exciting for me. I'm starting out launching uh, the beginning of the year and I can't wait to do that. It's going to be my first really big launch that I do. I've had other launches that were smaller, but this is my first really big one for a 12 month program. Um, super excited. 
um, finding out that it's a lot of work, <laughs> <laughs> which I knew. <laughs> Absolutely. Me and you both, like, a lot of logistics, you know, yeah. that's one of the things that I really wish our education system would do a little bit better. And I, I'm, I think for the future, it will don't teach enough about how to operate an online business. Right. You literally are flailing around like a fish out of water because yeah. there's not a lot of instruction on running an online business. So exactly. what tips would you give to people who are running an online business? What do you know now that you didn't know at the beginning? <laughs> well, when I first started, they didn't even have video. So that's how long ago that was. Um, <laughs> well, not, I mean, they had webinars, but not like live video like today. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I would say is my number one tip is to just be visible, be, be visible as visible as you can be. And by being visible, um, doing live video is one of the best ways to do that because it allows you to interact with the people that are there. Even if, even if you're not getting people on your live video, do not get discouraged. Actually, most of my views are actually in replay. And um, what I have found is that live video actually helps the algorithm. It, it helps the no like and shorten the no like and trust exponentially. And that is what you really need to be able to do in order to be able to sell to people. You need to shorten that curve, that no like and trust curve. Um, so yeah, that's one of the best things that, and the other thing that I would say is stop selling so much. Um, a lot of people when, especially when they're new to running an online business. They just want to sell, sell, sell. And what ends up happening is they push people away. Um, yeah. Online, the online environment is really all about um, relationship marketing. So yeah. you really need to take the time and build those relationships with people. Even, you know, I did a live video recently and I was talking about even the major corporations like Coke and Pepsi take the time. They hire people to build relationships with their audience um, because that is how important it is to do that. You can't skip that step. Because Absolutely. If you, yeah. It's so important. That's those, those are two things that I would say are vitally important right now. Yeah, you definitely have to stop selling and start serving. Um, you have to serve your clients. That's it. Um, we have to take our, you know, we have to take our cue from the Bible. If Jesus served, why would we think we don't have to serve people? Money is the byproduct of service, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the key things that I would say as well is don't try to sell your audience. You're going to turn them away. You're going to repel your customers and they're going to see that you're desperate. You're not desperate. We operate in grace and flow and ease. So mm -hmm. you present what you have, you serve your client and the money is the byproduct. Money is the byproduct of that. And don't be afraid to show up and be authentic. You don't have to be like anyone else in the marketplace. That those are my two little tidbits on top of that. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of the bigger things that people coming into the space need to understand. Mm -hmm. I agree. I definitely agree with that. So from, where, from your perspective and vantage point, where do you see the market in 2021 as it relates from your zone of genius? Where do you see that going? For this year, Ooh, it, that's a tough call. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say that is a tough call, and and I'll tell you why. Um, there have been so many changes in social media uh, the past several years, and um, it it is, you know, with Facebook, for instance, it's geared more towards groups, more towards the relationship building. Um, but they they've also had growing pains with that type of stuff too. So. Um, I would say that is going to definitely continue. It's important to build community wherever you are, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever you happen to be, it's important to build community. I would say that is number one across the board. Um, I think that it's going to be even more pay to play than it is now. 
but I think there's going to be different opportunities out there. Um, by different, I mean uh, they're going to. I, I think there's going to be different different avenues with which we can connect with our audiences. Um, you know, in the past, you know, Facebook bought up WhatsApp and they bought Instagram, so they're always looking to build on that. Yeah. Um, now, Periscope is going away or went away as of last year, but Twitter Live is still a thing. So the app is gone, but the platform is still there. Um, it, live video is where it's at. It's really going to be about building that community and serving a community, um, smaller, smaller communities, as opposed to the larger ones. I've seen a lot of people get whacked um, with community standards issues this past year, I, I think. I think that is an issue that hopefully Facebook works on and gets fixed. I think it's been a problem for them because they're picking up things that are not. Um, but I think that's going to get better as the AI software gets better. Um, but I really think the other one the other thing that I think is that as with all social media, you can't rely on it. They're not your people. You have to get them on your list. And that's yep. like one very important lesson for everybody who is utilizing social media. It's great if you have a good audience. It's great if your audience is huge. But unless you get them on your list, if Facebook goes away tomorrow, and they could, they have all kinds of lawsuits all the time, um, you don't know what's going to happen. So it's best to have something in place to actually get them into your own circle that you own. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Grow your email list. Grow your email list. Grow your YouTube channel. Um, grow a podcast if that's something you're interested in. Something that's your own content. Mm -hmm. Something that's your own content. Because, you know, even Pinterest is safer than Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, I mean... Pinterest? Pinterest is, yeah, it's not really a, a social media platform. It's like, um, I say if LinkedIn and Instagram had a baby, it would be, I mean, um, if Google and Instagram had a baby, it would be Pinterest. Because Pinterest is a search engine. That you right. can search how to do such and such the same way right. you would Google. And Pinterest is actually, it's funny because I don't have a lot of clients that really utilize Pinterest as much. Um, I do, I go in spurts on there. But what I will say about Pinterest is that Pinterest can be a massive traffic driver for a yes. business. And people don't realize that because it's not lumped in with all the other social media. It's just what kind of one of those things where people go for hobbies and, and cooking and all that. But there are people there that are searching for exactly what you do. So um, it is really a good idea to have a strong Pinterest strategy because Pinterest can be a traffic driver for your business. And the more traffic you get, the more sales that are possible. So um, you know, people are searching things all the time on there. Yeah. So that is, that is a, a great, um, a great lead in for that one, because I always forget about that one when I'm talking about social media, even though I use it every day. Yeah. Cause so. it's not really a social media platform, so to speak in the sense right. like the other ones. Right. Um, that's why people, they don't really use Pinterest effectively is because it's, it's like a visual search engine is yep. really what it is. Um, but it definitely, I can tell you guys, Pinterest, using Pinterest in your strategy for your business is huge. It is. In a short amount of time, you can make magic happen. So don't sleep on that. Yep. So in closing, what do you stand for? What is your mantra? What do I stand for? Hmm. In answering that question, I am going to tell you what my mission is because that's really what I stand for. So my mission is to lift women out of poverty mindset and help them 
build thriving businesses to break free from financial dependence and insecurity. Ultimately, and this goes into my vision, ultimately, I want to help them find their worth in the world, live out their dream life that is fulfilling and rewarding and allows them to feel they are making a bigger impact in this world. That is what I really stand for. And that is based on everything that I have gone through in life and what I see as some of the struggles that people have in life. Um, not only is it me helping them build a business, but it is me helping them to see things differently and to inspire them to be more than they thought they were or recognize that they were. Because it's not really that they're not, it's that they're not recognizing it. Right. So, That's beautiful. yeah. I love that. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing there. I love that. Thank you. I pray you enjoyed this episode of the Doing Business with God podcast. Help us grow by subscribing on whatever platform you listen to us on. Share this episode and pass it on to others. And we sure would appreciate a review and let us know what you think. Until next time, have the most amazing day ever. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Doing Business with God podcast. If you love this podcast, please share it with your family and friends. Leave us a review and help us grow. We also want to hear about your biggest takeaways. Take a picture of this episode and tag us on Instagram stories under Doing Business with God. And we'll see you next episode. I am your host, Michi Renee. Get clear, got strategy, secure the bag. Have the most amazing day ever. You've been listening to the Doing Business with God podcast.